Well, welcome everybody to Conversations on Critical Operations. And today we're going to be talking to Fernando de Mello. He is a, pr a project manager at Terios in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, good morning, Fernando. Good morning, guys. Glad to be here. Right. And we're also talking to Peter Moray. He is the industry principal for um, food and beverage and life sciences and a variety of others. Um, good morning, Petter. Uh, good morning, Nick, and good morning, Fernando. Nice to be here. Great, great. And if you have any questions along the way, please uh, just open it up in the chat window in YouTube, and we'll get to those questions right away. I'm Nick Durazio from OSIsoft. So, Fernando, why don't we start by asking, tell us a little bit about Terios. Okay, uh, so Terios, we are... Uh, the world's second largest sugar producer. Um, uh, Terio started as a, it's a French group, and it started as a cooperative of beet farmers. Uh, we have today around 12,000 uh, cooperative growers. And Terio uh, build um, uh, a strong uh, participation in a, a different range of uh, feedstock materials. So we started as beet, and then we moved uh, to uh, sugarcane, starch. Uh, we have a, a different range of agricultural feedstocks. Uh, from starch, we, we process corn, wheat, uh, cassava, alfalfa. Uh, we have sugarcane, we have beet, and we produce um, a wide range of uh, products from those feedstocks, from sugar, energy, uh, uh, starch, uh, derivatives like syrups, uh, protein, co-products as well. So we are very uh, intense in the agribusiness uh, sector. We have around 48 or actually 49 industrial sites uh, all over the world. In Brazil we have eight plants, being seven out of uh, those eight, seven of them are on the sugarcane business. And I'm based in the sugarcane business unit in Brazil. Okay, great, great. And now, who are your customers? Um, internally, I work in, uh, in a process engineering department. Um, we provide technical support to all the factories, so I'm, I'm in, the, in the industry, in the factory side, not in the agriculture part. Uh, in uh, my, my, one of my main roles is to uh, provide uh, technologies uh, to the uh, to the factories. So Pi is one of the systems that that uh, my team manages, and our main uh, customers in the company are the the factory engineers, uh, uh, support teams. Uh, we also provide uh, data to other corporate areas like quality uh, control tower, uh, operational excellence. Uh, so, but our, our main customers are the, the factory teams and engineers. Okay. Can you describe what it's been like uh, trying to get you know, real-time data to, to your people in these days of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic? Okay. So, we started up our, our journey to, uh, to provide data to people a few years ago when we decided to, to move to, to Pi. Uh, prior to that, we, we had most of our data were scattered in different places. So we had a limb system with uh, quality and lab analysis. We have uh, DCS across our seven plants, but we, we really had a, a, a bad time when we needed to find some history data. Our, our DCS is, uh, we, we, we cannot uh, store data for that long there. So whenever we had to troubleshoot, we lost a lot of time to get all the information. So uh, we started uh, investing on Pi infrastructure, and we did it as we started very small with uh, only the main process variables from each site. Uh, we started expanding our, our infrastructure, and right before we had uh, all this uh, pandemic crisis, we, we had uh, just finished doubling in size. So today we we are at around uh, 20,000 tags for for the seven plants in Brazil, um, and we also moved our uh, during, for this expansion we moved our architecture from a local server to the cloud. 
so that boosted up a lot of um, the, it made a lot easier and faster for people to access the data. Okay, and um, now along the way, you had found some issues in uh, you know in making those moves, and we were able to help you out with that. Can you describe some of that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, Osisoft support team always helped us uh, along the way. So from the beginning. Uh, they helped us uh, developing our first uh, architecture to when, when we just started. And during all the moves, uh, all the expansion moves uh, we had, we always had uh, a close support from Soft. They, they helped us actually build the current architecture. And it was something uh, also new for them because uh, I think that moving uh, all the structure from a local server to the cloud it's something that is not uh, uh, quite usual, so we we, had, we found it really some issues uh, that weren't expected during this way, but we had a support team always helping us, and we we were able to tackle all the the obstacles we had in the way. So it it was very good, and it's working very well now. Okay, great. Now, if I understand, uh, there because you were no longer had local access to the plant you ended up relying a lot more on on other things uh, notifications Pi vision uh, and then did we help you do any of that kind of setup was that something that we I mean how, how did that work out for you uh, yes we had a lot of uh, training uh, from OSI soft to our team to so that they we could learn how to work with uh, asset framework uh, with uh, the event frames and in the end the notification so we, we had a lot of help on how to build that and today uh, we we are able to do this uh, by ourselves uh, and and indeed uh, we, with all this pandemic we we today we have a lot of people working from home and uh, they are able to receive uh, notifications they are able to uh, access the real-time data from the plan so it, it it's making it a lot easier for us to do remote troubleshooting, even when working from home. What type of data sources ended up being important for you? Who needed that, and how did you end up bringing that data in? Okay, so uh, at first, uh, the most important data source for us is the, the, the factory DCS, uh, for sure, because it, that's where we, we gather all the sensors, information, and what's happening in, in our con operation, which is a continuous process. Uh, so this is where we started, uh, but along the way, when we uh, started doing having our insights and doing analysis, we found the need to cross-process data with other uh, databases that are not continuous, like lab information. Uh, a lot of our sensors, most of our online measurements are temperature, uh, pressure, flow rate meters. But we have we lack a lot of quality measurements online. We have a few, but we most of the information regarding composition and quality we rely on lab data. So uh, we, uh, as we moved and progressed on on Pi use, uh, we we knew that we 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 had the need to bring also uh, quality data to help our analysis. So that's mm -hmm. why we uh, today we. Part of our tags we use to collect data from uh, lab, but still uh, the huge part of uh, the, our data source is the DCS. Um, and then after collecting uh, data from uh, the, our lab system, we also had a demand uh, from our uh, SNOP teams and even the, 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 our downstream part, which is the packaging. Uh, to monitor uh, what's the production levels uh, per SKU that we produce, like the types of packages of sugar we, we produce. So that type of, that, that kind of information is usually not available in the DCS, but we have a separate WMS system. And we wanted to cross those uh, SKU data with what was happening in the plant as well. So that guys working in the packaging section, for example, uh, if they knew uh, something was happening in the in the sugar refinery, uh, they could uh, anticipate any impact in uh, some of the SKU lines. So we did that integration later. 
So this is one of the, the data sources that, that we, we, we have today. Uh, now, if, if you can, can you describe what, how did you end up getting the, doing that integration? Was that was in was that in a relational database? You had to use a, a, a different uh, mechanism, an RDB interface. Yeah. So for uh, for DCS, we use uh, standard OPC communication. Uh, it was very easy to go. Uh, for the lab, we are using RDM, RDBMS uh, interface. Uh, and for the dub okay, and that's that's the quality yeah, data, that, the laboratory data. Yeah, that's data. it. That's it. The, the quality data. And I'm sorry, what was the third type of data? You mentioned a third type. The third type is the uh, sugar produced production per SKU. This is in oh, our sorry. WMS uh, system. So uh, we could read that directly using our DVMS interface. But because of uh, when we, we got in contact with the supplier of, the, of that system, mm -hmm. uh, they were concerned about their system's performance. So uh, we found a, a, a way around, which was uh, they created kind of a, a, a table, an intermediate table, where they put all the information we wanted to gather. And then we used Pi to read from that table. So we, mm -hmm. we put an algorithm to do that. So. Uh, because of that, uh, we kind of created some experience in connecting uh, by uh, different ways, our, our team. So today, we are able to connect uh, OPC, RDBMS. We already we did some things with web APIs also. Uh, we are doing some pilots on gathering data from agri uh, an agriculture system, but it's still on, under development. Uh, so, uh, for notifications, we use web APIs as well to hook up to our mailing system. So, uh, this was good, this experience, because today our, our team, uh, with the, of course, with the aid of uh, OSI Soft Support Team, we are uh, very capable of using the whole range of connectors by offers. Petter is does what Fernando had to do at Terrius. Did that sound? Does that sound typical of what you see folks in uh, in food and beverage doing uh, as far as data sources go, or is that just the tip of the iceberg? No, I, I think that is a typical start we, we, we currently see, and and now uh, the trend in the industry is that we see more addition of uh, what some would refer to IIoT sensors. And some other companies might refer to them as process analytical technology. So we, we currently see addition of, of new sensors to the processes that are there to measure more of the product performance and the product quality, not necessarily on the process. So that you have some additional information about what is the current, let's say, quality or purity or maybe impurity of, let's say, the sugar that is produced in real time. Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily have to rely and wait for the, the lab test and, and the sampling of the labs. And, and when you have that type of ability to be notified or informed uh, more in real time about the, the quality performance, of what you're producing, you can then have higher flexibility, you can have probably lead to higher throughput uh, and many other type of business advantages. So that's the type of trend we also see here. And in some sometimes that type of data could also be data coming from the DCS or SCADA systems that also can contain uh, information about the quality. So we see the analytics tools today can establish uh, I would say correlated or predictive type of models related to the, the, the product quality at the response and the input date that could be the IIoT or maybe the assess type of, of, of information. And that is, of course, then coming back to the VMS system that they have, it's of course very important that you have a, a, a dedicated model or dedicated setup for every single SKU you're using. So I think you are run. It seems that you're running a, a fairly complex environment here. You, you said mm -hmm. you had like 48 plants globally, and yeah. now you are working uh, uh, locally in, in or regionally, I would say. In, in Brazil, mm -hmm. you work with seven plants. Yeah. And, and how, how many SKUs do, do you, how many different product 
stock keeping units do you, do you manage today? Uh, in, in our case, uh, across our seven plants, uh, we have three, three main products. So we have sugar, ethanol, and electricity. Uh, of course, that for, for ethanol, we, we are focused in ethanol for fuel. We have usually two types. We have the hydrous ethanol and the anhydrous or dehydrated ethanol. Both are used for fuel. Uh, sugar, we produce uh, a kind of a wide range of sugar types. Yeah. We have from VHP sugar that it's for export and used to, to in, in as, as feedstock for refineries. Uh, we produce also white sugar, uh, refined sugars. We have amorphous granulated uh, liquid uh, and, elect in, and electricity. We, we generate um, an excess electricity using our own biomass mm -hmm. and we export that to the grid. So um, our attentions are <laughs> to ha having the the best energy efficiency as possible and having the highest uh, yields or uh, uh, in terms of sugar conversion from sugar cane to our final products. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess you have a different type of, of key KPIs for that type of, of efficiency and energy uh, yeah. Yeah, consumption. So, so are you able to to look into these th different type of KPIs across uh, many of the different plants and sites you're running? Yes, yeah, yes, and um, uh, this is one of the, the uses that we we, we have for, for Pi when we compare uh, the, the KPIs across the different plants and also in one site um, having a, a KPI breakdown per areas. So our major uh, KPIs we have uh, the, the first is the uh, the availability or the downtime of the, the plant's capacity to crush cane. Uh, today we have like uh, our crushing capacity is a bit is a little bit above our current uh, sugarcane supply. So the sugarcane supply is one of our major bottlenecks. So this mm -hmm. is why we measure our downtime in terms of cane processing. Uh, the second and third ones would be the, our uh, our yield in terms of sugar conversion. It's our we call industrial efficiency. Uh, so it's how how uh, what is the portion or the the, the ratio of uh, the sugar content in cane that we are able to convert into sugar and ethanol. And the third KPI is uh, related to energy efficiency. So we we monitor our steam consumption. And our uh, output of power gen power generation and power export uh, per ton of cane crushed. Mm. So all those KPIs are, yeah. are, are those calculated as part of, of the Pi system today, or do you have also calculation outside of, of, of the Pi and other type of applications? Uh, for for the industrial efficiency, we calculate that. Uh, in uh, within our lab system, which works as our MES, almost as our uh, local MES system. So we do the, this uh, production balance there, but we use Pi to show that data uh, in, in a series of dashboards. Uh, in steam consumption, we calculate that on Pi, and uh, the downtime uh, also we calculate that using Pi as well. I had uh, some some further questions here. here. Uh, Terios, they have seven plants just in Brazil and forty-eight plants. Forty-nine. Globally. Forty-nine. Yeah, even. Forty-nine. So it's, it's a it's an enormous company. So, looking back into this journey, you have, must have been uh, traveling with or on here over the last few years. How how did it all start? Did it start like locally with, with uh, some type of problem formulation at one of these? Plants, or did it start uh, uh, at a more of a regional, or maybe even a, a, a corporate type of initiatives? Uh, what, what was the reason uh, it all started? Okay, so it's uh, uh, here. We started as a. It was it, it was a regional approach. We still don't we we still don't have like a global uh, pie governance. Our colleagues in uh, in the starch uh, business unit. They were already working with Pi uh, before we moved in, 
so they, they already had pie in their plants. Uh, our beet colleagues, they are. It's something that they are looking at, but they they aren't. They haven't moved to pie yet. Uh, they are they are looking into it. Uh, we started that initiative in in Brazil. Uh, uh, it was mostly uh, regionally, and it was a local uh, need. Of uh, we work a lot on you know doing troubleshooting, and we wanted to uh, to be less reactive and more more proactive in our actions in the plant. And we found that we lacked uh, good quality history data in, of our process information. Uh, so this is this was the major. Uh, major thing that motivated us uh, to move to a, a solution like Pi. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we lacked that, we, we wanted to do, we had uh, in, in the past, uh, we had like troubles with like boilers or generators, or we wanted to check what, what happened that caused a, a quality issue that uh, made us lose some efficiency. Mm -hmm. And we, we lacked, you know, we, we had history of lab analysis, but we lacked a, a history of process data that we could cross uh, those information. So that was the, the, the major uh, reason that made us made that move. And when we um, when we started that uh, and started, uh, we started very small. So we, we didn't have Pi Vision at the beginning, uh, and we we uh, we only had like process book and a f few users. Uh, most mostly the technical support team that had access to the information, and one of the, one of the first things that we uh, decided when we wanted to expand is that before we grow in size in terms of number of tags, the first thing we need to do is to give more people access to the information. So we uh, we did the move of going uh, onto Pi Vision uh, before we increased uh, our tag count. And that, uh, to looking today in the past, I think it was uh, the best decision because uh, we, we provided all the plant engineers, the, the, the factory uh, technicians, uh, access to the information and they could create their own insights on that. Uh, and we see that uh, over the last years, we have improved a lot our efficiency, of course, based on a, a whole range of actions. And I'm sure that uh, having those uh, information also helped people having a lot of insights for that. Uh, the only point that we haven't uh, tackled at the beginning, it's something that is still in our roadmap, is the maintenance side. So we, we started looking, as I am part of the process engineering team, so I, we started giving a lot of focus in the, in the, in the, in the process. Uh, but we still have also a journey to go in terms of maintenance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I have a qu question. So it sounds like good results. You're saying an improved uh, efficiency because of now you're looking at DCS data, quality data, the same thing. Um, had you tried anything else before you you ended up implementing this through the Pi system? Uh, actually, we tried. You said this was an ongoing problem. For you know, I mean, it's something everybody recognized. You really didn't have the ability to bring the two together. Did you Did you do any homegrown solutions? I'm just mm -hmm. curious. Uh, we try to do that using our lab system, uh, like to, to make it read data from some of the sensors, uh, but it, it was like uh, too complex <laughs> and very low performance when we wanted to bring a lot more information. And, and, we, and we try to, to stick with the uh, history softwares embedded with the DCS systems. Uh, but when we wanted to uh, gather, you know, huge amounts of information for very long periods, we always crashed uh, the, the computers. So we uh, we uh, always find it difficult going the way around without having a, a more, uh, uh, you know, expert platform to do that. Hmm. Cool, cool. Okay. Um, and do you have any, I mean, I know you said improved optimization. Is there anything real specifically that it that was able to um, improve on? Any specific results? Just just that one aspect of it, the bringing in the quality data that you weren't able to align before with your DCS data. Anything specifically you were able to do with that? Okay, so uh, one, one thing that it's more specific is that uh, 
human beings are not the, the only clients, they're the only customers of Pi. We have also some uh, expert systems or softwares that mm -hmm. are receiving Pi data as well to take a decision. So one of the applications we use is real-time optimization. So we have an RTO software in, in some of our plants and they are using both uh, uh, quality data and DCS data to uh, tackle optimization. So to be more specific, I would like to give one example. So the first uh, step of our process is uh, the sugar extraction. So uh, in the sugarcane mills, you can carry the, the extraction either by uh, mills or the, the, like the rollers uh, that press the cane and extract the juice, or you can do that by sugarcane diffusers, but it's it's kind of a similar process. The main the main purpose is to extract a, a juice from the the cane and separate that from the bagasse. And one very important aspect of that process is that uh, we need to to add water to help uh, drag or uh, uh, to wash the sugar out of the cane. Uh, and there is a trade-off you need to do when we add uh, water. So the more water we add to the process, we end up extracting more sugar. Yeah. But at some point, even if we add like more and more water, uh, the additional benefit of extraction starts to you know to uh, go down. And on the other hand, if we add more water, it means that we need to evaporate more water, so we have a higher steam consumption. So there is a, a trade-off on what is the optimum value of imbibition water we need to, to put to reach maximum extraction without uh, uh, increasing a lot our steam consumption. So this is typically one of the, the main set points that our RTO handles. And the way it does that is that we need to feed uh, quality data. So what's the sugar content in bagasse, the sugar content in cane, and process data, which is like, what is the flow rate of use? What is the flow rate of steam that we need to produce? So that the RTO is able to handle all the calculations and, and reach the optimum set point. Mm -hmm. So uh, by doing so, uh, we were able to increase uh, maybe at least uh, half a point of extraction efficiency uh, over the last years by using the, the, the RTO enhanced by Pi. So, so that means that you, 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 you increased productivity and at the same time reduced product, pro production cost at the same yeah. time. Yeah, that's it. And I would assume there is a lot of variability in the sugar cane, in the sugar content, in the sugar cane uh, between the various type of fields, or of course over the season uh, when you get that in. So that needs to be managed uh, on the yeah. uh, maybe hour by hour or or day by day basis. Yeah, it's. Uh, I it's more, we don't have that much of variation in an hour basis. Mm. Uh, if you're talking about sugarcane coming uh, from the same uh, front, but along the, uh, along the day, we bring cane from different places and mm. we might have some differences depending on the, where we are harvesting. Uh, if there was, depending on the time of the year, we, uh, we have different Purities, purity levels, and sugar content levels. So it's it's uh, pretty much seasonal. Uh, we usually know uh, the seasonal curve of, of sugarcane, but of course there are lots of variabilities on, on that. Uh, in in one day or a few days, we can we can have, and and then we have to handle when we receive a cane with a lower purity than we are expecting. We have to re we readjust our process accordingly. Yeah. Uh, so we can have the highest throughput possible with Excellent. that new level. So is, is, is that type of, uh, uh, two questions on that, is that a type of methodology or approach also something that you use for the biofuels or, and also for the beet uh, processing, the, the type of real-time uh, adjustment here? You mean, uh, just to make clear that I understood, you mean that yeah, you, you do other inform business yeah, you, you do informed decisions here on the on your process based on, uh, let's say the the sugar content in 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 the slurry or in the sugar uh, sugar canes, and then you add more or less water, and you would like to add as little water as possible because it 
both yeah. consume water, it is uh, increasing throughput of productivity, but it's also increasing production cost in, in vaporizing mm -hmm. all the water away uh, in, in the precipitation process. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, it, it's it's the same challenge that our our colleagues in the other processes have. For 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 starch, it's it, the process is it's uh, kind of different. They don't have that same process step, but for beet, it's uh, it's more or less the same. They have uh, yeah. beet diffusers at the beginning of the process, so this is a bit similar to the to our case. Yeah. Uh, only well, I have a I have a follow. I, I like to change the subject actually. But did you have anything else to add to that, Peter? Uh, I wanted to get into a next use case, the digital twin use. No, case. What, yeah, what, one one question here. All those type of calculations that you're generating with this uh, third party advanced analytics software, real time optimization, RTO software here. Do you write that result back to the Pi system as well, and and visualize and present that? That's part of the Pi system in Pi Vision, for example. Or it yeah, we, we write back some of the main uh, results so we can follow in the, in the dashboards, but most of the outputs of the RTO, since uh, it generates set points to our DCS, yes, exactly. so usually usually the, the RTO writes back directly into the DCS, because the, mm -hmm. the RTO runs, since it's, a, it's an automation uh, solution, it needs to run locally. So mm. we we uh, we have to we need to have a fast uh, response time. So it's like uh, we use Pi to to provide data and to uh, read and uh, uh, to show the data and to consolidate the information. Mm. But the uh, the real acting we do it directly between a communication between our RTO and the DCS. Can you can you talk anything about the value of implementing this and having having the first of the data consolidation contextualization with Pi and then this RTO platform? How what is the type of well the the, the main the main value Pi is adding to that is that uh, whenever we uh, we want to put a new tool or a new technology in our process, we of course we we have a benefit but we have a cost associated to that. So we need to uh, very closely to monitor if uh, what is the value that each technology we are putting in the process is, is bringing. So uh, which KPI is being changed because of that technology, uh, what to compare with our baseline before. So uh, without Pi, it, it would be very difficult for us to do that type of analysis. So uh, Pi, in the end, helps us to uh, to, to check if uh, the performance of those technologies we are using are, are good enough. So RTO is one example, uh, or even other applications like advanced process control, or, or even uh, our regular and standard uh, PID controllers. Uh, we need to monitor if they are having a good performance because otherwise yeah. they may generate some losses. So we, we uh, Pi helps us, you know, uh, uh, checking if we are really extracting value from the hardware and software we are putting in the plant. Mm -hmm. now, th and that, that is the thing I, I also see with other f food ingredient companies. Uh, they have a, they've had a number of, of good use case presentations on, on, on exactly that to topic to, to, to monitor the PID or PLCs uh, mm -hmm. in, in the control rooms. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, I had a, a different use case I wanted to discuss. Now, that's not the, what you're doing with the um, uh, impro improving the results of your artificial intelligence system with better data now that you've got quality data, DCS to get data together. Is that the same, that's not the same project as your digital twin project where you're doing kind of, you, you're adjusting target targets based on, on estimates or calculations from a digital twin system? Can you describe that system? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's similar. It's it's not the RTO. The RTO it's uh, it's pretty much focused in the, in the automation part. So it generates set points and writes it into the, into the DCS system. Uh, when we talk about the the digital twin, it's more like a simulation tool. It's a management tool uh, for the, the 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 process engineers and the, the and for routine management. So it's kind of a way of looking uh, more real time. Uh, uh, we, we have like the quality data from sugarcane, and uh, once we we change the cane throughput or cane quality, and we need to re 
uh, recalculate what's the best route uh, each area needs to follow to meet the production standards. So it's uh, we use a simulation tool to do that. It's a mass and energy balance model. Uh, and it's uh, being f uh, it receives uh, it receives data that are streamed uh, through Pi. Okay, I mean, in any I mean, any results you can report on that? Uh, for for this, uh, since it's a it's a management tool, it's a, it's a little bit harder to to link directly uh, a KPI improvement on that. What's helping us a lot is that. Uh, uh, even quite recently, we uh, we had to uh, to run with a, a condition which was not the usual. We received a cane with uh, a lower quality standard, uh, and we had to reduce our throughput. So we used uh, the simulation to readjust our process. And the way we we thought that was value is that uh, we could actually reestablish. Re uh, the, the the simulation model predicted that we would take a certain amount of hours to reestablish the the original condition, uh, like we would take like uh, like f for uh, a little bit more than one day of uh, uh, to reestablish the original condition, and in the end we were able to really follow very strictly the what the simulation told us and. We it, it got it right, so we we took actually the the amount of hours that the simulation told us we would we would uh, take to to get it back. It was exactly what happened in in, in real time. So it uh, very nice. Wow, neat. And you're using the web API for I mean, you're using you're using your own development tools w along with our tool set, our API to grab data and use it in your own. Uh, applications or in Tableau and different things. Can you describe the usefulness of that, or what's the value you're getting out of that? Okay, so uh, for this, it's something that's still under development. So, like I told, the ma the maintenance part is something that we are uh, still we still have to to develop. But one of the one of the applications we started looking at uh, is you know crossing the the asset data. With SAP information uh, like uh, maintenance histories or work orders for maintenance, and cross that with uh, uh, PI data from from the assets. Uh, we are using a, a, a Tableau interface uh, to to compare those information. So this is this was a development that we did. Uh, Using the the interfaces, uh, uh, the web API interface of of Pi, but it, it's still at the very beginning. Uh, we we have we still don't have a uh, a use case on that. We are we are still building that yet. Okay, no good good. Uh, one last question for me is: Did you have any surprise benefits? Uh, you know, one of the things our founder and CEO Pat Kennedy likes to describe is over and over again people. People use real-time data for one goal, and then they find all kinds of ancillary benefits that they just never imagined. Did you have anything like that happen? Yeah, uh, one of the interesting things that we had is that uh, when we started, we, we have a, a remote uh, technical team that uh, that now is using a lot of uh, Pi uh, to monitor and follow the real-time uh, the plants while they are working remotely. And uh, one of the insights that we were able to have with real-time data, uh, just one example. One we, one of the, uh, one of our expertise in terms of support is the energy efficiency. So uh, now we're able to see, like, if there is any uh, uh, reducing valve or relief valve that opens in the process. Uh, now we are able to cross that information uh, with any issue that happened in in the plant. So uh, uh, the, even this year, we were able to identify uh, some issues uh, that linked uh, generator performance uh, in one of our plants with uh, uh, pressure relief and pressure and reducing valves and. Uh, 
once we've identified that, we were able to, to tackle that issue and uh, in the end reduce a little bit our steam consumption. So it's uh, okay. yeah, this was a, a, a nice. we, we didn't we couldn't see that before we had uh, the real time data. Mm. So an, an, another point is that w uh, from one campaign to the other campaign, uh, we, because our main fuel is uh, biomass is sugarcane but gas. Uh, in order to start up the next campaign, imagine we need we need baguettes, but at the beginning of the campaign we haven't you know crushed cane yet, so we need to have a certain amount of fuel or baguettes that we need to store from one campaign to the other, so that we have enough fuel to do all the commissioning and the restart of the the factory for the next season. So we need to have a very good uh, management of this. Uh, uh, passage storage of biomass from one year to the other year. And another surprise benefit we had using Pi is that we were able to generate a curve uh, based on the steam production per boiler uh, that helped us uh, establish what is the minimal or the critical level of uh, the gas that we need to store that allows us to do all the required commissioning for the next campaign. So before mm -hmm. we had pie, we had like a, a, a guess on how much baguettes we needed to, to, to leave there. And we put a lot of, you know, uh, we, are, we were a lot more conservative on that. Uh, we, la we tended to leave uh, more baguettes and we, uh, we could use that baguette to generate electricity now, but mm -hmm. we had to, you know, to store more because we didn't know exactly how much we, we, wanted, we, we, we would need to, to use. And now with Pi, we can, uh, based on those measurements, we could be more accurate on that and even be more aggressive on what's the minimum uh, stock of baguettes we need for the beginning of the campaign. So right. we could use a little bit more our fuel <laughs> because of that. Optimize the entire utility. Nice. So, so coming, coming back here to, to the current uh, yeah, pandemic situation here, with the with the COVID nineteen, uh, and I think you you touched a little bit on that. Uh, you said you you have the ability to now work remote, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and and how, how many people are uh, currently working remote? Okay, in so Brazil today, so today um, we have uh, fortunately our, our all of our seven factories here of sugarcane. They are uh, they are working uh, fine. Uh, plant uh, operation teams, they are working uh, on site, so there's no, really no way we can, uh, uh, they need to be at, at the plant with the operators. But we have uh, from uh, remote support teams, corporate areas, today I think it's uh, between 400 and 500 people working from home now. Mm -hmm. uh, not all of them are linked to industrial operations. Uh, but uh, several of those people, they, they need to have access to what's happening in the plant. So uh, in this case, uh, Pi is helping a lot on providing uh, people information on what's happening on site. Uh, we have, I have colleagues that work with me in, in the process engineering department uh, that they do, even now that we are working from home, from time to time we have to do like support visit to the sites and because we have access to the information remotely, we can, you know, uh, start doing the troubleshooting, uh, part of the troubleshooting uh, before. And when we, uh, we can even be more assertive uh, during the visits. So we, we know exactly where we should look at and we are, you know, more assertive and to, to create the action plans. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Now I understand uh, back in May, uh, one of our uh, customer service managers, uh, Delilo, uh, was able to actually do a webinar that had been what was that originally planned as an mm -hmm. as an uh, uh, um, a site training, but you ended up converting it to a webinar because of the pandemic. yeah. This is a this is a very good mentioning as well. It's it's part of the 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 journey we are starting on maintenance. So really, you're right. We were thinking about doing a local uh, training with Danilo. And because of the pandemic, we turned that into a webinar, and it was very uh, successful because 
in the end, I think the webinar would be the, the best choice because we, we were able to even uh, increase our audience uh, in the webinar. It's when we when we uh, do a local uh, training or or lectures uh, uh, with plant uh, um, uh, staff, it's usually very difficult to <laughs> to take them away from the operations and to gather them in a in a room to discuss things. So the the web with the webinar we were able to do that uh, with the teams across the different sites. So it was a very good experience. Uh, with the pandemic, and even after we pass all this uh, uh, this tense moments we are facing now with the pandemic, even after we are over it, uh, we believe that this uh, culture of using webinars, I think we're using a, we'll be using that a lot in the future. Mm. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, that's it for the questions I wanted to ask. I think we've gone through all the stuff that we wanted to talk about. Petter, did you have anything you wanted to? Yeah, because uh, if not, I wanted to go into our lightning round. Yeah, yes, 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 a quick ahead, one then. here. So, coming back to this journey, you're you're just in. I, I think you're. I would say we are in the in in the beginning of the journey. We have, uh, or you're right now running seven plants out of four to eight plants. So, how how long time does it take to to implement, uh, uh, let's say, a, a pie system and to do the contextualization at, at your current type of knowledge and experience where you ha where you are today? If you, you would mean, add you another mean, site. Mean, ah, okay. So uh, you you mean not not to start from scratch, but if I no. want to add another site. Yeah. Yes. Ah, uh, it's not. Uh, maybe it takes like. Uh, depending on the complexity of the site, maybe two months, one month mm -hmm. to do that with our current yeah. knowledge. Yeah, and and that means that you would uh, reuse a lot of the templates you have for the asset framework and event yeah, frames. Yes, yes. And, and so yeah, it's, the, it's, the good it's thing is that awesome. when we started, uh, when we started, we already had uh, asset framework, so we started using asset framework from scratch. So we already had, you know, the the culture of organizing our tags in, uh, per asset. We did a lot of sanitizing on that when we doubled in size and moved to the new structure. So we did a lot of re reorganization with our AF structure. But the way it is today, it's uh, it's very easy to hook up uh, another site or other levels of information there. So it's excellent. Yeah. That's yeah. great to hear. So, um, well, great. Thanks for uh, thanks for all that great information. Let's do our lightning round real quick. All the questions that folks that are in critical operations can really appreciate. So, right now, are you in, are you downtown or are you at a site? Uh, I'm in the home office today. Home office, okay. But do you normally work uh, work on uh, at one of the production uh, sites? Normally I am, but now during the pandemic I'm okay. I'm part time in home office and part time on site. Okay, so it's your production site. What's the most interesting wildlife that you usually get straying onto your on your property? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here in Brazil we have like that uh, bird. It's called tucano. It's the bird with the orange. Uh, yeah. You're kidding! You got two cans coming on, yeah, on the yeah, side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's very so cool. Yeah, we have wow. those. Do you need the on-site training? <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you personally have a piece of broken gear or equipment or motherboard fried sitting on your desk as a memento? Uh, not right now. But the only gear the only gear I have here, it's my gamer headset. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Well, it's a new generation. Yeah. <laughs> What's the first computer you ever used? Ah, uh, it was like a, a, a very old, uh, well, it's a, it was a, a 286 uh, computer with like Windows, uh, I don't know, Windows 2 point something. <laughs> fair, fair enough, fair enough, that's cool. <laughs> At least Windows. Um, so do you manage any others? <laughs> well, I, I use yeah, them as well. Do you manage any other systems? Uh, a little bit, but they're... Oh, okay. So you know, the, you know your way around a command prompt. Good for you. <laughs> Do you manage any other systems uh, besides Pi, or do you, you know, do you, you, do you play a big role in any other systems besides Pi? We see that in a lot with a lot of our uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not from IT, uh, but we we do manage Pi system today. Uh, apart from Pi, we manage also uh, 
the RTO system, uh, advanced process control, it's something that we are starting. But we also have uh, a, a control loop performance uh, monitoring tool that we also, uh, our team manages as well, uh, you know, for okay. the PIDs. And okay. apart from that, we, we have like a, a mass and energy balance simulation engine that we also manage. So it's good, good, good. It's something to something to remember. Any OSI employee that's watching this, it's the pie is not the only thing. Most of our customers are, are responsible for. Um, what's the best or coolest calculation or bit of code or report that you were ever able to do? You know, we're always working with data, right? What's the coolest thing you were able to do like that? Uh, I mean, one of the things that the coolest things. Uh, I think maybe the uh, uh, when we when we started uh, calculating the the planned downtimes, this was uh, pretty cool because first we our our measurement of OE in the plants uh, mm -hmm. were based on the sugarcane uh, weighting. Uh, so we had the trigger, the sugarcane trucks. They come in, we weight them and take the total weight of cane and they leave the cane in the process and then when they have the empty trucks going out uh, we have you know the 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 net uh, cane weight that was brought in so our kind of real-time information of cane crushing at that time was based on the, the those uh, sugarcane truck measurements so uh, let's say if a, a cane truck takes like a few hours to go out, so we, we have a delay on that information. And when we were able to use uh, Pi to take like uh, motors or, or the cane preparation devices or the mules, uh, conveyors, uh, electric current, and we could use that to create a set of conditions that can tell us online, oh, the plant now is crushing or it's not crushing. So this, this was pretty cool then when we were able to put that on online. Great. Okay. Very cool. Okay. Last thing is your, your your physical site is just absolutely beautiful, and I'm just kind of curious. What is the what's the what's the prettiest view or your favorite view when you are on site, and what is it you're looking at when you're looking at your favorite view? Uh, since I'm a guy that looks a lot on on energy <laughs> on the energy side. Uh, one of the, the greatest views for me is when I, I arrive, when I'm arriving at the mill and I see, you know, the, the, the flue gas coming out of the boilers. If the, the smoke is white, uh, it's good <laughs> because it's always burning well. <laughs> we, we have, or the combustion is good. <laughs> That's very cool. That's a great way to start your day. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Fernando. Thank you for your time. Oh, thank you. I appreciate a lot of the invitation. It was very yeah. glad to, to share with you the, our insights. Yeah. Th right. And Petter, thank you so much for yeah, joining thanks, us. Thanks, Nick, and thanks, Fernando. Uh, yeah, thank a you. great a great conversation. Pleasure to be here with right. you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, bye-bye, everybody. Thanks again. See you all next week. And again, uh, thanks for joining us.